So this video is dedicated to my wife, Tina. And the reason I'm dedicating this video to my wife is because last night she was streaming karaoke on TikTok. And the very last song, she decided to dedicate a Taylor Swift song to me, which I'm not gonna complain, Taylor Swift's pretty cool. But I wanted to hear a Nicki Minaj song and I requested that from her, but she never actually sang it to me. So after she was done streaming, I called her out. And I'm like, hey, where's that Nicki Minaj song I requested? And she said, you should be happy that I dedicated at least a song to you. And she pointed out that I never dedicated any of my programming tutorials to her either, which made me feel kind of bad. So I think the uh, the quote she actually used exactly was, how come you never dedicate any of your J-Nob tutorial videos to me? Um, so here you have it. We are gonna be building out a J-Nob tutorial video. You might ask, well, what, what is J-Nob? Well, it's, I don't think she knows what language I actually use at work or I would use my tutorials. I use JavaScript, but she said J-Nob for some reason. So, since there is no language called JNob, I decided to build out a programming language called JNob, and I also added a VS Code language for custom syntax highlighting for my language JNob. So there's an extension that I'm actually running right now that highlights all my keywords and stuff. Oh, and then I also have a recursive descent parser, which basically runs over this file and interprets the tokens that it sees for my JNob language and run some basic JavaScript commands behind the scene to basically interpret this. So if you're super lost right now because I didn't give a good overview of what we're talking about in this video, we are going to talk about the JNob language I built, the grammar that's used to build out this language, the recursive descent parser that's used for basically interpreting this language, and then also the VS Code extension that I worked on so that I can do some syntax highlighting on it. And I'm not going to do any live coding or typing in this. I'm just kind of going to walk you through what I got, and hopefully you learn something from it. All right, so let's move on to the grammar. So in my college days, I took a programming class that taught about like languages and grammars and left, right grammars. And I don't really remember at this point, but there was one grammar that I did remember. And that was something called like an LL1 grammar. Basically, if you have a programming language that follows a particular set of rules or a grammar that follows a set of rules, you can use a recursive descent parser to basically interpret it or compile it or whatever. So I wrote out a simple grammar. I don't think this is fully complete. It might have bugs in it, but once you write out a grammar that looks like this, you can paste it into a tool to verify that it is a authentic grammar of LL1. And when you run it, it tells you some stuff. I don't know what all this stuff is. I'll be honest with you all, but I'm sure someone smarter than me can understand what all this is. And But I'm hoping since it gave us a table, that means that our grammar is correct. Um, and with that being said, we can basically start implementing a recursive descent parser to interpret our grammar. So that is the next thing I'm going to talk about. So I have an index file here, and this index file basically consists of a bunch of recursive functions that kind of map to our grammar one to one. So if I were to open up that grammar file, pull it over here, so hopefully you guys can all see this. Let me move this over some. So one thing you'll notice is that on the left for our grammar, I have a function that maps to all those. So program is the top level of our grammar and that takes in a, an array of tokens. So all the tokens that it spines, so load, this is a token, that's a token, that's a token, that's a token. Basically anything that's split by a, a space is considered a token, um, ignoring like new line characters and return statements and tabs. So you can see that if you were to remove all the spaces, tabs and new lines, this would just be a long list of like tokens with spaces in between them. And that is basically what we do at the first step of this parser. We get an array of tokens and then we pass it to program. Program basically calls a function called statement list. So just following this grammar, we call a statement list. See here, program is a function that calls statement list. And then statement list is going to call um, statement. And then also it's going to recursively call statement list again. And that is one way you can write a recursive descent parser to work on your LL1 grammar. Now it's been a long time since I've been in college, so I don't know if I'm saying all this stuff correctly, but it seems like it's working. So the main thing is the statement function. A statement list can be a bunch of statements kind of back to back. And all we do is we keep popping off a token at the front of that list. And we check if it's a print command, we need to print out the next thing that we found in memory. If it's a load command, we run fs read file sync and we set it into a ver like a memory variable. Let me let me actually show you the JNOB script so you can kind of 
understand what's going on. So let's look at the load command, okay? So we basically get to the statement function. We check if the first token is load, then we are going to shift off this token, to know what file location we need to read from. So that's here, file name. And then we shift off this keyword that we don't need. And then we shift off the grammar variable. So this is the variable name that we're using. And then we read the file using fs read file sync. And we put the contents into memory. So memory is just a object, a JavaScript object here. But we are basically putting like memory of grammar because that's the variable name up here in green is equal to the file contents. All right, that's, that's basically what's going on there. And then we got a bunch of different other commands. We got like find lines in, which is gonna do the same stuff. It's gonna shift off these keywords and then it's gonna get the variable, shift off a keyword, figure out the string, shift off the keyword, and then figure out the variable to put the results into. Um, and then the cool thing we have down here is a loop token. So if we find a loop keyword, we call a loop command. So in the loop command, let me go to my grammar. A loop is basically set up as a loop, a number, and then a loop statement. And then a loop statement is basically a statement list, which can just be a long list of different statements and kind of going back to what we just did. But the cool thing about the loop command is we basically just look ahead. We keep on looking ahead until we find a keyword stop. And then we push all of those commands inside an array and we continuously just keep on running them over and over again by calling the statement list with a clone of that. Okay, this is probably super confusing, so I'm not going to get too much into it. But just know at the end of the day, we got a cool little program that we could easily run with our interpreter and it just does different stuff. So you can kind of build upon this to make it do more things. And honestly, I think this language, like if I was working with this language at work, I'd probably enjoy it because for loading a file into a variable, that's pretty straightforward. I don't know if you can get more straightforward than that other than like using bash. Um, and this is just for fun. So this language might suck. But for any of you out there who's curious, like how does a compiler work? How does an interpreter work? How do people write programming languages? Um, this was a really high level overview, which probably confused the heck out of you. So you might need to actually read a book to learn more information. All right, so we talked about the grammar, which basically defines my language. I showed you a really small snippet of my language of it actually doing something with reading in a file, finding particular lines in a file, and then printing them out inside loops. And then I showed you the recursive descent parser over here, which is basically just a bunch of recursive functions or functions that process different commands and do different things. Now, the cool thing I want to mention is how did I actually make my JNob script highlighted in VS Code? And this one was new to me. I had to actually like look this up a little bit. But over here, I have a folder called JNob Lang. And this was created by using a Yo generator. So I think you can just like follow the tutorial that I found. You can say Yo generate and then you can say make me a VS Code language extension. And that will make all of this contents you see in this folder here. Um, but the the important part of this is if you load up the syntaxes file, this is where you can define. Let me open this up. This is where you define a bunch of different regex commands that basically highlight your code. OK, so in this case, we have a patterns array. And inside this first one, we are saying if we see a command that starts with load, and has a group here of what is this a through z with slashes and dots and then a command with into and then finally another a through z multiple characters i can kind of change how those work so this first group is going to be styled with a string second group is going to be styled like a property and then everything else is going to be a J knob, or a keyword control. So that is basically how I am achieving the color highlighting. And I believe if I change my theme, like we change this to like red, it's still styled. And that is because these keywords here, these are actually like, I guess what VS Code uses and all the different themes use. So that's basically how I can do it. But the one thing that was really confusing was how do we know like where do these come from? Because anyone can kind of define these. So what I did was I kind of looked at the theme that I used, the winter is coming theme. And I looked at all the different scope 
properties and these are the things we can use so like if i found a, a value or a color that i liked i basically just went and found a scope um like this one i looked up the color and if i thought the color was good i basically just put it on my 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 uh uh where'd it go my language pattern I don't know if that's the right way to do it. This is the first time I've ever done like a VS Code extension, especially with styling a language. Um, so I got 14 problems. Oh, that's probably my JSON. So that is a quick overview of how you can pretty much do it if you're interested in making your own extension with like doing a language or something. Let me change my theme back because this red is nice, but it's... And that is basically how you can build your own language with your own interpreter and your own VS Code styling on it. So if you want to be one of those people who wants to publish yet another language to the 10,000 programming languages we have, just to confuse people and get people hyped up about learning a new syntax, I think this tutorial would help, hopefully help you out. All right, leave a comment below, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you're new to this channel. That's basically all I wanted to talk about this video. So have a good day and happy coding.